So uh, CNBC guys, they came out with this one this week. It says home buyers need to earn 80% more than in 2020. Just four years ago, 80% more than in 2020 to afford a house in this market. And it's not just due to high mortgage rates. Now, right come away, on, people are going, oh, you're fanboying. This is the cover that mortgage rates aren't the problem. No, mortgage rates are part of the problem. They are Good a time. big part of the problem. Uh, but the connection between housing costs and wages has been gradually separating for years. And similarly, the number of new housing units built through the years has been declining and the low supplies rooted in restrictive land use and zoning regulations. We talked about this exact thing three shows ago, talking about regulation in California, talking about how they're way behind inventory and supply that was called for 20 years ago. 20 years ago, they yeah. said you need to make a quarter million more homes per year 20 years ago. And now we're here in 2024 and we're two and a half million yeah. units behind. Yeah. That's crazy. You know, he, it, just to say, it, it, I, I saw this article and it says homes are now unaffordable in 99% of U.S. for average Americans. Yep. That That's crazy, about, right? guys. I was like, what the hell? You know, when they're considering the average American income being 71000 Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And so as we went through this, I started looking at it as California, obviously, not surprisingly, requires the highest incomes. Yeah. You know how much money you have to make in San Diego? 200. 200, yes. 200. 273,613. Oh, 273? 273. Oh, I thought it was like 210. Dude, that's, or another year, said, that's another yearly yeah. average. You were, you were saying 200. I was like, yeah, I thought it was 210 in my yeah. head. It was 273. 273, oh, 613. Los, An Los Angeles was 279, 250, it's which kind of seemed cheap in comparison to well, you know, San Francisco. I thought it would be higher. Yeah. Wow. Which, okay. Well, that's scares me for San Diego, though. And San Francisco, guys, three hundred thirty-nine thousand eight sixty-four. Wow, that's a starting admin job over at Google, I think. <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> I don't know. That's nuts. I have no, I have no idea. If any of you are watching are Google and you're a starting admin, let me know what your salary is in the comments. Okay, box. take a guess what San Jose was. Uh, I'm gonna say four hundred and thirty thousand. Oh my gosh, Andy, you're pretty darn good. It's, I mean, it was it? actually four hundred thirty-one. Four, 454,296. Oh, okay. yeah. Guys, that's crazy. That's a lot. Shit. That's crazy. Well, I, I mean, how? <laughs> how exactly. you need, like, I'm trying to, like, whatever. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Again, considering the affordability to be that 30% yeah. is what they are look, really looking for. Mm -hmm. you now, know? And here's the, here's the thing that I think is difficult about like averages when you look at this type of article and we talk about this specific talk, yeah. top topic is, you know, they're going to cite that the average. Home buyer or the potential home buyer needs to make around one hundred and six thousand dollars a year to afford a typical home. A typical, but a typical home is not in San Jose or San Francisco or L.A. or San Diego right now. Um, it's going to be somewhere else where it's closer to that median price, that median sales price. Yeah. I think what's median sales price right now three eighty nine or something like that. Me median na nation. Whatever I thought it, it was four and change. It might be four and change. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I we, thought it was like four twenty five and change. Well, any, but the point point being yeah. that the median median it's going to need to be closer to median than it is in these ultra high cost areas. So um, the amount 106,000 is a lot of money still in a lot of the country. Yeah. Let's not displace that. Let's not yeah. dismiss that. Um, the, I think that the, the startling part of this is the, the short four year window, short four years yeah. that has had such a tremendous increase of, uh, of need for money to yeah. make up that gap. Exactly. I'm having a hard time like Huge. getting my well, thought because out. Well, like, because again, because what happened was prior to 2020, we were having at least anywhere from 900 to a million homes available nationwide. Yes. So yeah, yeah. our supply shortage just shrunk yeah. to a half. Like a quarter million yeah. at one point or something you like that. You know what I mean? And so when you're talking about only 400 and change homes being available nationwide, that puts a lot of strain on the supply mm -hmm. of homes available to yeah. people. I mean, this is the worst we've seen since 1984. So, affordability is crazy it's off the chain so you have you have supply that's part of the problem and part of the supply issue then down down one more step is that you know builders building new houses and that's hard yeah. to do the, you know they're referencing here zoning regulations and land use restrictions both both of those are true a couple shows ago we talked about just east of us there's a 1300 uh, acre piece of land that was purchased to conserve rather than to develop yeah. and that then now moves everyone who needs to develop in San Diego to a different part of town potentially and with no solution to bring more housing online to yeah. that volume anytime in the near exactly. future. Um, so th th if yeah, I, I really enjoyed this part of the, <laughs> I say enjoyed, uh, it was smart. If we have a supply problem, we really have to have a supply solution. Yeah. We, we just do. Yeah. We have to have a supply uh, solution at some point. And I'm not a builder. We're not builders. 
No. I, I would I would just love to talk to a builder and find out what how are they making their choices now? We need to get a builder versus in here. versus just four four years ago or even ten years ago. Yeah. Like what has changed? I know some of the landscape that's changed, but what has changed in the decision making process at the board table? Uh, whether you're going to de- develop and build in places or not. Again, Andy, why? Why would you do that as a developer, right? You're going to kind of plead the fifth of, oh, I'm doing my best of building so much, even though they are getting good tax credits, you know, et cetera. But it's just they, they're they they're pretty much controlling the market when it comes to that. They don't want to just overbuild and then see that. Sink prices. Yeah. Their prices are shrinking. Well, but, their but their, the their is, profits is you, are shrinking. I, I don't know that. I mean, I, I understand that that's one angle of it. The other part is yeah. like just the cost to even put it up is lo- a lot higher. Yeah. So there, just your operational cost to have a product on the market is a lot higher, to, which then means the price has to be higher. But again, if there's no buyers for that, then yes, you're 100 percent risking yeah. that your margin gets squeezed out by the market because of too much saturation. Yeah. I get that. It's as simple as they put right here. More supply helps keep prices down. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> so it, you know, to me, it seems like they're doing it backwards. I just feel like if you incentivize the builders, you know, the demand for the buying is already there. So why don't you help them the most so that they could bring out as much inventory as yeah. possible and stop giving away credits where you know it might or might not benefit them in the front end or back end. But at the same time, the builders are the ones that are yeah. going to bring out more inventory. So why don't we help them if we know there's all these obstacles? All always comes down to one thing. Inventory, inventory, inventory. Yeah. We have the solutions. We just always like to talk about the problems yeah. and drag it along, drag it along until hopefully someone says, hey, no more of that. But I feel like the solution is there. Yeah. Build. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Build. They, they have to be willing participants. And I don't know how willing that's going to be. Um, it's obvious that the answer is more inventory. Obviously, is the that's government going to cool. get into construction? I don't know. I mean, we've <laughs> talked about that too, where it's like local municipalities will kick in and do certain things too. But and it's like, they, again, they have to be willing. I, I think it's going to have a lot to do with mo- the migration of populations and that's where they're growing in surging areas of population growth that need more housing. And then where are there job opportunities for people that are going to be making enough to buy homes in those areas? Yeah. So yeah. I think that's going to be the the future the, the future um, answer on the table. Okay. And that's what's gonna that's what's gonna drive it. So. All right. I don't know, guys. Let's get more homes on the market. Me? Yeah. There you go. Right. I know. I feel. All hey, wah, I'm working wah. on it. I got a few ADUs wah, going wah. on. You know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, the article even said smaller attached homes yeah. is going to be the way to go. You know, when there's a big old fire and you see somebody with the little bucket, boom, <laughs> throw it in there. <laughs> That's me. That's me. Uh, I'm watering it down. 